Alright guys, this is Mike Tech here back again with another review and this is going to be the review of the MakeSpot G1 3D printer kit. Now, right off the bat there is something that I want to tell you is that this right here is a 3D printer that is meant for somebody who is going to be tinkering, meant for somebody who is going to be taking apart their 3D printer, um, fixing it, changing it, modifying it. That's what this 3D printer is meant for. This is not meant for somebody who wants a 3D printer straight out the box that's complete and all they have to do is just plug it on and turn it on you know that's that isn't what this 3D printer is this is meant for somebody who's going to be tinkering who's going to be messing around with this stuff changing it modifying it making it bigger um, faster stronger all that stuff and if you're that type of person this is a good 3D printer for you because if you look look down here it even comes with the ramps board I'm gonna go ahead and move this build platform out the way just to show you it comes with one of the most popular boards out there for 3D printing and that's this board right here. There's a lot of stuff in the way. But that's this board right here. This is the Ramps. I think this is the Ramps 1.5 or something like that. And at the bottom of it has the Arduino Mega which is down here. And you can program your own software to go with this 3D printer. You can modify it yourself if you wanted to. Put your own custom software on there. And I actually plan on doing that with this thing. But if you're not that type of person, if you don't want to be modifying your ramps board and putting screens on it and stuff like that, then don't get this 3D printer because this is this is a a person who is going to be building it, modifying it, changing it and stuff like that. But if you are that type of person who are who is going to be doing all those different things, there is a couple of things that I want to mention to you that I, I just want to give you the heads up on so you know ahead of time before you go ahead and make your purchase on this 3D printer and one of those things is is this thing right up here now out of all the problems that I had with this 3D printer this was the biggest one okay and this right here is like the heart of the whole entire 3D printer if this doesn't work then nothing is going to work and basically what this is here this is the extruder okay this is the part that takes the plastic that goes in through that little tiny hole right there takes the plastic in and then heats it up down here right down here there's a little heater underneath that black thing right there heats it up and then pushes it out of the really thin nozzle which is right here pushes it out of a nozzle so you can make stuff like this alright now all of this here was printed out with that with that little nozzle right there and I had that nozzle working for about three days. After the third day, I went back on the fourth day and turned it back on because I wanted to do something else. And I kept getting problems. I kept getting the nozzle kept jamming up on me for some reason. And it just didn't want to melt the plastic right. And I took the thing apart and I found out that the plastic was actually getting clogged inside that nozzle right there. And the reason why is because the nozzle was so big that the plastic was actually melting before it even got to the tip right up here so there's a little a rod there's a metal rod in here that goes all the way up to the top all the way up let me get a little bit closer so I can better show you okay so you're not going to be able to see the metal rod but there is a rod inside this thing that goes all the way up to the top all the way up and that whole entire rod gets hot and it actually melts the plastic before it even touches the nozzle which is a bad thing because that's how this thing jams up all the time so if you're gonna get this 3D printer I also recommend you go ahead and get this thing right here now this right here is called a J head hot end okay now you can buy it from that website right there and I'm also gonna put a link down below and you can click on that link and you can also purchase this off of Amazon I think for like fifty something dollars or something like that but I recommend you go out and get this hot end the reason why is because if you flip it over and you come in a little bit closer you can see right there that, that, look, that looks kind of like a heat sink right there and that's a good thing that's going to stop the plastic from melting inside this tube before it touches the nozzle you want the plastic to melt in the, in the nozzle not inside this tube right here and that's why I recommend this one because this has kind of a heat sink design to it and you can put a fan on here or if you don't want to put a fan you can just leave it how it is and it will still work I've seen lots of people use this head with a fan or without a, or without a fan and it still works 
So I'm also going to have a video on this to teach you how to take this um, hot end and put this hot end on this 3D printer right here. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, I'm going to put a link to that back there below. But that's one of the biggest things with this 3D printer right here is the fact that that nozzle keeps getting jammed up on me. So if you're going to get this 3D printer, make sure get this nozzle. A couple other things too that I would also recommend with this 3D printer here is uh, this thing right here. Now it, it may not look that big, but this is a big thing right here. I, I recommend everybody out here to get one of these things. This right here is a level. Okay. Now the reason why you want a level is because you want to make sure that this build platform is level. Because if the build platform is a level, all of your parts that you make are going to come out crooked. Okay, and that's bad. You don't want crooked parts. Okay, so make sure you get, make sure to go and get yourself a level. A level does not come inside a box. You have to get that separately, and it's also good for this top rack up here. So let me back up a little bit. This this part right here is also good for that part right there because you have to make sure that that right there, this right here is level. Because if this right here isn't level, one side is going to be higher than the other side, and that's going to cause your parts to be crooked and slanted one way so you don't want that right there that'd be bad for all your prints um, another thing too uh, that I also recommend is getting some zip ties because I ran out of zip ties for this thing right here um, they give you enough wire but they don't give you any zip ties to put the wire on there with so that's kind of a bad thing there that's why if you look at my 3D printer there's wires everywhere down here look at all those wires down there None of the wires are put in a nice place. None of them are tidy up right. I have one zip tie down here, but that's not enough to hold all of them in place. So I have to go to the store and get some more zip ties. I recommend you do the same before you get this 3D printer. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty good 3D printer. There's nothing really too bad about it. Besides the fact that that nozzle right up here keeps getting jammed up. And I, out of all the things that you need to go ahead and replace, replace this nozzle. You can use it for about three days, but then after that, it's gonna it's gonna freeze up on you. So go ahead and get yourself a brand new nozzle, um, and then after you get your brand new J head or any other type of nozzle, um, go ahead and watch my video how to put the J head on this 3D printer, the G1 3D printer right here, and just go put it on there, and it should work forever pretty much after that. You shouldn't have another problem. So uh, all the things I recommend you do, get this right here. Um, this right here is a power supply. You don't need to get a power supply because it comes with one. But if you don't want to get, if you don't want to use the power supply that comes with it, which is inside this box, let me pull it out real quick. Okay. So if you if you don't want to use this power supply right here that comes with it, you can go ahead and get a PC power supply. That's what this is. This is a PC power supply made by those people right there. Um, now, if you don't want to go ahead and use this three, um, this power supply, this is a PC power supply. If you don't want to use this, all you have to do is go ahead and just go ahead and just buy a separate power supply. You don't have to use this one right here. You can use something like this. If you're gonna get this, it has to be more than 300 watts. Okay, trust me, I know this power supply here is actually 300 watts, and it can barely handle it. Um, get one that's 350 watts or higher. Nothing lower than that. Nothing lower than 350 watts. If you get a 300 watt, you're going to be banging yourself in the head because it's barely going to do it. So you need to get something more than that right there. Now if you come over here at the build platform, you see all these little printed um, 3D plastic printed parts right here. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want you to get an idea of the quality that this thing right here prints out parts at. Now this isn't like a maker bot or anything like that. The the quality of the parts isn't going to be that great. Okay, now it now that does depend on how you set this thing up. If you set it up and it's set up right and it's set to like the the best settings that you can possibly make this thing go at, you're going to get a, a really good looking 3D printed part. Now if you don't do that, then you're going to get a part that looks kind of like this. It's going to be real crappy looking. It's going to have lots of lines in it. It's just going to fall apart, which is all these parts over here. All these parts here just fell apart on me. And these were some of the first parts that actually printed out. 
Now, if you come over here, this is where I actually figured out how to do it. It still doesn't look that great, but it's a lot better than these parts right here that look kind of crappy. These parts right here actually look a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and turn the light on so you better see that. It looks a lot better. This is actually usable and it's actually really, really strong. Um, I actually use this thing on a day-to-day -day basis. I actually use it to put pencils and stuff like that in. So it is usable. Usable for something like this. Um, but that's pretty much it that I could possibly think of when it comes down to this 3D printer right here. When I recommend this 3D printer to everybody, no. I wouldn't because I don't think it's meant for everybody. I think some people are really going to hate it. I think some people are really going to like it. Uh, before I end the video, this fan right here, this fan was supposed to be mounted. This fan right here was supposed to be mounted up here on top of this motor. That's where they told me to put it. But I didn't put mine up there. The reason why I didn't put it up there is because this is just a motor. And the motor really doesn't get that hot in the first place. What does get really, really hot is these electronics down here. So I took the fan and I put it down there. Obviously, you have to flip it around. So that way the blades don't hit anything. Just take it, flip it around like that. It actually does work pretty good. I know that may look kind of ridiculous, but it actually does work. So I'm going to keep it down there for right now. But anyway, though, like I was saying, I would recommend this 3D printer right here for everybody because I don't think it is meant for everybody. Um, if you want something like a MakerBot, go ahead and get a MakerBot because this is not going to substitute for something like that. This is just for somebody who's wants to build their own 3D printer and doesn't know where to start. Okay, so if you're that type of person, go ahead and get this right here. If you're not that kind of person, don't bother with it. Just go ahead and get a MakerBot or a Maker Gear or any other type of 3D printer out there that you can buy, that you can afford. But if you got $400 to spend on a 3D printer kit, get this because I think this is one of the most easiest kits to put together. It may not look the best, but it ain't too bad for a 3D printer. So that's going to be it for this review. Um, one thing I would like for you to go ahead and do is go ahead and click that little subscribe button to see more videos just like this. If you want to go ahead and watch the unboxing video that I did, you can go ahead and do that right there as well. And on top of that, peace out, have a good day, and yeah, that's it.